Greetings and welcome to my channel. As you can see from our opening graphic, I'm either out putting the general population at grave risk, or I've been playing with Affinity Photo again. This is my second video about writing and will cover a form of outlining or storyboarding using DevonThink, a freeform, Mac-only document filing cabinet with which one can not only conquer the world, but have a place to put it. The first impression I had of DevonThink was as sort of an encapsulated finder, a way to curate a collection of files tied up in a pretty ribbon. It is that, but also much more. In general, you put documents into groups, which most folks might call folders. You can sort things a number of ways, or you can choose unsorted, which lets you drag things into any order you want. Some document types, like text, markdown, and rich text format files, can be created and edited right in DevonThink. You can also open any document in any appropriate application installed on your Mac. You can create your own templates, which are just files that get copied in when you create a new document from a template. For instance, I have a MindNode template. I also have a few Millel templates and a few Omni Outliner templates, not to mention some Apple Numbers templates for various uses. Templates are handy. You can also create a file outside of DevonThink and drag your new file in, but creation from a template is quicker. Once you've got a file in DevonThink, you can duplicate it. That's just what it sounds like. You right-click a file and tell it to create a duplicate wherever you want. Both files are initially the same, but they are independent copies. Edits made to one don't affect the other. You can also create a replicant. That's almost like making an alias to a file in the Finder, except Finder then has the real file and an alias. You can edit either one, but if you delete the real file, the alias is broken. DevonThink manages that for you. When you create a replicant, you basically have the same file in two places. Edit one, the other reflects the updates. If you delete either one, the other remains as a regular file, and that's really nice. DevonThink is very flexible in its searches and will even suggest related documents using AI. Don't make Robbie the Robot jokes. DevonThink's AI is surprisingly effective. DevonThink is very robust. I've never lost data. My largest DevonThink database is currently 5 gigabytes, comprising 7,241 documents. It opens quicker than I can complete a mouse click and searches are fast. And... Of course, DevonThink will sync in a variety of ways. My favorite is to sync to an encrypted thumb drive. It's available offline. If I lose it, it's encrypted, and it was just the sync storage. I don't lose any real work. Where DevonThink really shines for me is tagging. Tags can be nested, which is very powerful. You have a new document, so you put it into a group. Often, though, categorization needs to be done different ways. Documents for a work of fiction could be grouped by plotline. You could have groups for locations, characters, and story ideas. But story ideas involve characters and locations, too. You might only have a few dozen notes in a database, but it's already in need of more than one scheme for categorization. You can create as many trees of groups as you want by replicating files everywhere they should appear. Tagging is more flexible, though, because a tag is almost the same thing as a group in DevonThink. The difference, which you don't actually need to know, is that tagging a file creates a replicant into the tag group. You can use a file from the tag group or from the regular group you put it in. It's the same file. When you delete a file from a tag group, it just removes the tag from the file. The file remains in the group where you physically put it. If you delete a tagged file from its physical group, it's in the trash and no longer appears in the tag group. All this means you can collect a bunch of files and then apply different taxonomies. One tree is by some general category, another tree is by character involvement, 
Yet another might be by plot thread, or whatever you want. Tagging has great applications for a form of outlining that I'm proud to say is my own little invention. At least I think it is, and it fits a certain outlining or storyboard style I like. My goal in outlining is to plan the sequential presentation of a story. That's what I'm writing, a story in sequential sentences and paragraphs. They may describe things that hop around in time, but the reader's experience is linear, sentence by sentence. Things often appear more than once in an outline, too. Alfred Hitchcock's MacGuffins crop up everywhere. If I make a note about a MacGuffin when I'm planning Chapter 19 that has implications in Chapter 1, I want that note I made in Chapter 19 to appear in Chapter 1. There's an easy way to accomplish that. Here's a sample database I've made by copying an active project. Lest the topics here strike you as odd, this is either a long essay or a short self-help book for nonprofit board members. It is shocking how some nonprofit organizations are abused by their board members and particularly by crooked treasurers. I'm a treasurer of a nonprofit corporation. There will be no abuses on my watch, and I want to help others be vigilant. Consider this collection an inventory of tools and ideas without regard to what story they tell. I usually plan in increments, so let's get introductory comments planned out. I'll turn off Devon Think's sidebar. Always nice to eliminate what you don't need. I've gotten all kinds of ideas here. This is my inventory of stuff. Mind maps and text notes, mostly. I think I'll start with some discussion of good and bad. An all-time bestseller starts out with dark and then let there be light. It works. I may not like how this goes, though, so I don't want to commit to any one thing. I'll just tag what I want to use as Opus 1. Opus 2 comes later after I've had a chance to think things through and maybe sober up. There will be at least a beginning, middle, and end, so let's think about an Opus 1 grouping with subgroupings under that for the sections of this work. You can specify tags by path, so we'll tag this note about good and bad with Opus 1 slash 01 introduction. Why the 01? Well, because there might be an Opus 2 introduction in the future when I try a different approach. Tagging a file is as easy as typing the tag beneath the preview of the file. There. Now we see Opus 1 and O1 introduction were automatically created. I think next I'll talk about an event from my youth at a place called Art Carved Rings. Let's tag that as O1 introduction. See how autocomplete worked? That's why I like tag names that are descriptive. Let's add my notes about Roy's Wisecrack, that's a good story, and my mind maps of the fallen and vulnerabilities. And I've changed my mind, too. I want to start with Roy's wisecrack. Let's set the sort order to unsorted, which is to say manual, and reorder my topics. Great. Almost there. We need a place to write, so I'll create a Millel document from a template. I'll call it MS Opus 1, and I'll also tag it with the tag Opus 1. Time to get to work, and I don't need to be distracted by all this other stuff. Double-click on Opus 1. Double-click on the Opus 1 manuscript to open it in Mellel. Now let's double-click on O1 Introduction. Great. The manuscript is open for business, and just the notes I want to see are there. I'm ready to write. I think my good and bad ideas will come out in different places, so it might get tagged with O1 case studies in the future, and there's something I should add. Manipulation and root cause are very key to good and bad uh, tendencies. Now, when I tag this note in other places, these edits will appear there too. But what am I leaving out? Let's set up something called a smart group to list what's not been used in Opus 1. We want to see things that are documents and that don't carry the Opus 1 tag. Now, if we see something that fits, we can use the location field in the info panel to see it in context, and, of course, we can add or remove tags as we see fit.
This has advantages over conventional outlining. I create an inventory of ideas, just shotgunning them out as they occur to me. Tagging lets me borrow from the inventory to create a group of notes for a subdivision of what I'm writing. If a character evolves as I write, or I need to make sure of everything that needs to happen in the future, I make a note in the document for that character. Then I see that everywhere I tag the character. Please click the like and subscribe buttons if you like this sort of thing. I don't have time to do this regularly, so there won't be frequent updates. Wish me luck. I'll do my best. And good luck in your writing to you, too. I'd be fascinated to hear your comments about your experiences. Have a great day.